Hi there. Today I want you to take a minute and think. Think about all of the different times you've had great ideas. Maybe you've had a business idea. Maybe you've known that you've needed to reach out to a family member or a friend. How many times have you had opportunities or ideas come into your mind and you just let them go? You don't necessarily act upon them fast enough to make an impact in your life. Well, today on the Rich Mind Podcast, we're going to dive into that subject. So if you've had moments where an idea just shows up for a business, maybe it's a product, maybe it's a service, or it's something that you just know that you should reach out to somebody and uh, just say hello, and you just have let those times pass by. If that resonates with you, if that's something you've done in the past, this episode is going to be exactly what you're looking for today. So stay tuned. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, as I mentioned in the intro there, the idea of letting ideas and situations and opportunities pass you by and not realizing that those opportunities are exactly what you need in that moment to move forward to this bigger, brighter future that you're looking for. And I've had to discover this on my own. And I've actually had to discover this by observing through other friends and family members as well. So let me share a little bit more about how I discovered this on my own. Uh, through the early 2000s, let's call it 2005, 2006, I was in the middle of just grinding. I was working a lot. I was, if you don't know already, I was a retail store manager and my store was up, open and operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which meant I literally didn't have, other than not necessarily being in the building, I was always on call. I was always working basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I never had a break and I just thought that was normal. So I was taught growing up that I just needed to grind. I just needed to work. I needed to hustle. And that amount of hard work and hustle was going to, going to equate to uh, this big financial payoff at the end of the day, that the company that I was working for was going to take care of me. That's what I was taught. And that's what I believed to my core, to the point where I would do anything for the company that I was working for, literally anything. I would leave my family in the middle of a uh, just family events. I can remember several times that we'd be having dinner and I'd get a phone call or I'd have to take care of a situation. Uh, when my little kids were, they were little, right? They, they needed their father and I wasn't there because I didn't think, or I had the belief that I needed to keep hustling and grinding at this position. I, I used to, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. I, working for a, a corporation, I used to cut the grass. I used to go out and pull the weeds. I used to do all kinds of things in any way, shape, or form that I thought would help make my little store more profitable. And that's what I thought and believed that I needed to do. So fast forward then to a spring day. Uh, as If you're listening to this at the time of the recording, we're just getting ready to enter the spring. So think of it as very similar to a time frame of today. And spring, the sun was out. It was just a normal average day for me. I showed up to work at my normal scheduled time, parked in my normal uh, parking spot and walked in be and began to start my day. Uh, did my laps around the store. That's how I kind of got uh, acclimated basically with what was going on in the building from the night before and getting ready to see what I needed to do uh, that following day. So it was a regular day. I was just in a regular routine. And that day was something that changed my life forever. I will never forget that day. And hopefully I can convey kind of how I felt uh, through that day. So as I mentioned, it started off normal. Uh, one thing that I, one of my morning activities was I was always responsible for giving my office manager their break in the morning. And so I would be responsible for managing the front end of the store, which met the uh, ca uh, cashiers and the checkout and the office. And so one morning, as I mentioned, it was a typical day. I was just doing my thing. I was kind of cleaning up. Um, so the check stands where the merchandise is, where the candy and the candy bars are, and even the registers themselves. I was going around cleaning them off, 
uh, just wiping everything down, just trying to keep myself busy. Because in the mornings, if you can imagine in a grocery store, it's not necessarily super busy at, let's say, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, which makes it nice because I didn't have a whole lot of things to do as far as the office functions. But at the same time, I still wanted to keep myself busy. So as I was wiping down the check stands and making sure that the candy was stocked and making sure my cashier was doing well, my supervisor walked in. And I knew instantly that this was something was going on. I, and the reason why I knew that is because he and I had several conversations in the past where he would share with me that he would like to save his visit to see me towards the end of the day. We had a great relationship. Uh, we would, it's almost like a mentor mentee type of relationship. He would sit down with me and share different wisdom, uh, not only about the grocery business, but also about life and family and all kinds of things that I took from him that were just really fantastic. We just had a really great relationship. So for me to know that in the back of my mind, and then for him to walk in the store about 9 a.m., as I mentioned, the sun was just coming up, you know, everything was was going well. I was kind of in my groove for the day. I knew what I was going to be, be doing, right? Working on finishing up this break for my office manager. I knew exactly where I was gonna head to the next, my next activity. Uh, to my checkoff list, I used to carry a little note card in my my shirt pocket that would have my checkoff list of things I needed to get done uh, from day to day. And for him to walk in, it totally took me off off guard. I was not prepared for that moment. And so he walks in, and I and I greeted him. Obviously, I was as I mentioned, we had a great relationship, so I greeted him. I welcomed welcomed him in to the store that morning, and politely asked him, you know, what's going on? What, why, what brings you in? I uh, wanted to know why he was there, right? Uh, I was trying to do it in a nice way, but at the same time, those, those alarm bells were going off in my mind. And his response to me in a very cold, uh, not mean, but just very uh, subdued uh, tone, like, you know what I mean? Not a friendly tone. He looked at me and he said, Mr. Wilson, uh, we just need a chat. So when you finish up doing what you're doing, uh, let's meet in your office. And I've just, I have something I need to share with you. And instantly my heart dropped into my stomach. I was like, Oh no, what did I do? I thought that I had done something. I thought that I was about ready to get fired. I thought that I didn't know. I mean, my mind was just racing. Imagine sitting there, a gentleman that you looked up to more than anything, like a father figure. And he's sitting there telling you that he needs and has something that he needs to share with you. But he doesn't want to do it right then. He wants to do it in private, in your office. And as I mentioned, my my heart was racing. I uh, began to instantly started to sweat. And just it was just, I was a mess. So uh, he started to make his laps. So the one thing that he did when he first always came into the store is he would make a lap around the store too, just kind of check conditions, make sure everything was operating as usual. And so he did that. So I let him go on his on his way around the store as I finished up uh, taking care of the break that I was taking care of for my office manager at the front end. So that finally came to an end. And as I mentioned, my heart was racing. I didn't know what to do. Um, I quickly made a quick lap around the store to see if there was anything like out of place, right? As I mentioned, I thought I was going to be really let go, right? I thought I was at that moment where I was going to be fired. So I quickly walked around the store to make sure that there wasn't trash on the floor, make sure that all the displays were built make sure that the back room with the grocery back stock was in order, right? I was like, I was just panicking, trying to figure out, okay, what did I do? What didn't I do? What do I need to fix? And so everything looked, in my opinion, as it was in order, meaning I had just made a lap around the store an hour or two prior to, and there isn't much going on that early in the morning to really mess anything up. So I, I really thought that everything was, was fine. So it really got me really wondering what was going on. So I began to then make my trip up to my office. And I opened the door and imagine this, this door is heavy. It's a big, thick, it's a black door that, it's like at, at a commercial office building, right? If you can imagine just really being in this, this big office building, that's kind of what this door was. It was really heavy uh, to the point where when I walked in, he invited me in. So the door was shut. I opened the door. I began to walk in 
and he, you know, invited me in to, to come have a seat. And so I began walking towards my chair, which was at the back end of this very small 10 by 12 room. It's, it wasn't a very big office at all. And he stayed behind me. And what he did is he pushed the door shut and that big, heavy door slammed so hard. It literally scared the life out of me. It made the biggest bang you can ever imagine. Uh, everything in the store was, was hard surfaced. And so it just echoed in I, to, to say that my heart wasn't just pounding out of my chest uh, with that big old loud noise that scared me to death. I didn't know what was going on. And I sat down, I turned around and sat down and he began to speak. And the words that came out of his mouth the next few moments was really what turned and changed the trajectory of where I was at that moment and the belief systems that I had that I want to encourage you with today. He looked at me and said, Randy, I know you've put a ton of effort. And he knew that he knew all the physical things that I was doing for this uh, facility to try to get it more profitable, to get it where the company wanted to keep it open. He says, Randy, I know you've been working your tail off to get this building and this business as profitable as it possibly can. But the company has made the decision that we are going to close this location. And that's all he said. And I just sat there and I was like, I didn't even know how to process that at the moment. That was not something that was even in my mind. I instantly, I forgot about myself at that moment. I wasn't worried about me at that moment. I was thinking more of, well, what does that mean? Does, you know, do I, what about my people? What about my vendors? I had great relationships with my vendors. What about, what, you know I mean? What about, what about, what about? And I just, my mind began to race about what that meant. And so he gradually went into what that did mean and, and what the story leads to. And what I want to leave you with, with that story was it totally was the beginning of me realizing that I was not in control of my life. I was completely at under the mercy of somebody of this company. And it wasn't my boss. It wasn't his decision. It was the company's decision to close my store because of it wasn't doing well. And I understand that, but I had put in so much effort, so much time. Personally, I've sacrificed myself. I sacrificed my family. I sacrificed a lot to have it just in an instant be taken away from me was the big takeaway. And I realized that I was not in control. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. You need to figure out something that you need to get control of. So if you've had ideas, if you've had thoughts and feelings and ideas of something that you need to go do, things you need to begin, things you need to start, I want to encourage you that today is the day. Don't wait for this wake up call like I got. It was an instant, sudden my life turned upside down from that moment on for the next four to five years because I was just bounced around. I didn't lose my job, but at the same time I lost, basically I lost my drive to just even perform. I didn't even want to do it anymore. I, just, I lost a piece of me and I don't want that for you. And it doesn't have to be. If you choose today to start thinking about the ideas, thinking about a business that you want to start, think about who do you need to contact? Who do you need to reach out to? Who do you need to get closer to, to begin building and bridging the gap from this current situation that you may or may not be in to this better, more control, a better outcome for your life moving forward. And I encourage you to do that today. Another quick story, because this is where this hits home for me. This is uh, very personal for myself and, and maybe you'll resonate with this story as well. My father, we worked for this same company for, I was there for nearly 20 years and he was there for nearly 30 years. We worked for the same, same supermarket company and the exact same thing happened to him. He got to be 50, 55. This is in that same time frame, And the company was struggling admittedly, right? So they were looking for any way possible to cut expenses. And instead of being moved. So they closed mo my location, but they moved me to a new location, which, so like I said, I didn't lose my job, but my, for my father's sake, he didn't have that opportunity. They eliminated his position at 55. I think it was 55 years old and he didn't know what to do. He had no control over what was happening. He had no control over what he wanted to do. And then fast forward, just even a few years later, 
he at just before he was about to turn 65. So this is about the fall of when he was 64, about to turn 65. So he was working his tail off, getting ready for this quote unquote retirement for this big day where he was finally going to get to relax, do the things that he wanted to do, quit going to work every day. He found out that he had cancer and it was one of those stages of cancer that he found out in late fall, let's call it November, December. So more like winter, I guess, of uh, the year when he passed and he was, and he was gone by the next June and he was meant to retire within the next few weeks after that. So the, that part of the story, again, is that there's no time to wait. You need to act upon your ideas. You need to act upon your anything that's coming to your mind. It's all within you. If you know, if you have a feeling, there's nothing to be afraid of. You need to keep and do the action. Letting it go, stopping yourself before you continue to make the steps needed to move on to the next thing. It's not getting you where you need it to be. I understand you probably have self-sabotage patterns just like I have had. You're going to have to do some work, some internal mental work to push yourself through those tough times. But I'm telling you from my experience of when I lost my store and then my experience of my, from my father where he literally lost his life and he didn't accomplish nearly what he had in mind. He used to have a, a folder full of ideas. He was a, a draftsman. So what that means is he would draw a lot. And so he would always have ideas and there was, they were always in sketches. He would always have an idea of a business. He always wanted to have a rental store uh, where he would rent out tools or equipment and he never did it. He never took the action to make that happen. He always thought it was going to be someday. Someday he'll go do those things. Someday I'll get to, to the action needed uh, to make those things happen. And he let the fear of something that wasn't real keep him from taking the action to building out this life that who knows where he could have gone? Who knows what he could have accomplished? Who knows who he would have impacted? And I don't want that fear to keep you from doing that from yourself. Find the courage. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. It has been for me and it will be for you. But if you understand that if you push through those challenging moments, the what's on the other side of those moments, that's what you're looking for. That at the end of the day, when you have the joy, when you have the freedom, when you have the life that you dream of, that's what it's all about. And I want to encourage you to move forward towards those actions today. So folks, I hope you found this message valuable. This is the story. You're probably going to hear me refer back to it quite a bit. These stories have impacted my life so much so that I've gone down uh, the road of, of self, self-education, trying to get myself better with my financial education, understanding how money works, how to build a business, marketing, sales, all of the things required to build a life that's different than just showing up at a job and leaving your future in the hands of somebody that at the end of the day, doesn't probably really care who you are. You're just a number. If you're anything like me, you're just a number. I was a number. I couldn't tell you what that number is today. I used to remember it. I used to have it uh, memorized, right? But I was a number. I had, to, I had to clock in or clock out, right? Everybody has a number at whatever job they are. And more than time or more than likely, you have a number too. And just know that that, that number can be replaced at any time. And that's what, a, uh, that's what could possibly happen. And I don't want that to happen to you. So go out there, think about, have these ideas, take the courage, take small steps, but take steps, move towards this brighter, bigger future. And I would encourage you to do that every single day. Go out there, have a fantastic day. Focus on being great. I look forward to coming back to you with the next episode again very soon. Until then, bye now.